Um, the song itself, The Wonder of You, is something that I took to Belarus um, earlier this year. I was sitting at home after Joanne had gone out and listening to the radio and a version of the song, it was a new version of the song, came on the radio, a version by Villager, or Villagers. And um, it was a version that it slowed it down a bit and you could hear the words absolutely crystal clear. And for the first time, I really, really, really did hear the words. And I thought, how appropriate. I mean, this really was a smack in the face in terms of it was so appropriate with the kids talking to the volunteers, the volunteers talking back to the kids. It was absolutely perfect. And the, the plan was bring the song out there. There was a guitar out there anyway, and I knew the guitar was going to play a big part in what I was doing out there. Um, there was a guitar out there, and I was bringing the song out with me. Um, unfortunately, my bag went missing on the way. The words that were in the bag to teach the volunteers, to teach the kids, um, never made it out there. Um, and we scrapped. The first couple of days, we didn't really do much with it, and then we kind of, I had to write out the words, and we said we'd try it. Um, but we never did fully get it out there. And, um, you know, that wasn't a big problem. And I suppose the only time we did actually sing it, um, well, we sang it a few times, actually, but the only time we oh. sang it with the kids involved was at this moment here. Um, and I know Joanne will tell you about this moment, her last day in the orphanage. Hi, I'm Joanne. I'm the wife. This photograph here captures the moment where um, Don and I sat with our two heart adopted daughters, Lida and Tanya. That's Tanya on my side and Lida there. Um, and they, they love to sing. They absolutely adore singing. And we had sang it a few times with them and they sang along and whatever. But of course, on the last day when we're leaving, it's not a pretty moment. It's not nice to be leaving. So we took them to the back of the old orphanage where we knew that we would have a bit of quiet time. And, and ice cream time. And ice cream. They got ice cream. But we sat and sang the song with the girls. And Rosie had come along with the ice creams for the girls and captured the moment on camera. So it actually, not only was it a serious moment for us to um, sort of to hold as a memory, it was captured in a photograph and hence why we blew it up and put it on mm. the wall because it was such a poignant moment for both of us. For me to be sharing the time in Garadici with Don was amazing, but to capture what we've sort of, the little dream that he had mm. has now exploded to... Yeah, because that was it. Having not had the opportunity to sing the song over there, um, the plan was hatched. Actually, while we were there, the plan was hatched to bring it home and release it as a, as a single. And the whole idea at the time was to do it for Christmas. Um, and it was only afterwards that the whole concept of maybe we could do it as a Christmas number one. And it was with a whole pile of thought going into it then and who, we could, who could we involve? Oh, let's get some schools involved. And it just absolutely it blew up out of, I dare I say, all proportions. of the year we were trying to figure out something a focus for the children um, with regard to the choir because they always like to know where they're performing or what they're aiming for when they're doing all the rehearsing so this year we were saying oh we've nothing really to focus on this year and suddenly Don rang me up and said we have a project he said it's all in my head I have lots of ideas and I want to try and make it make this happen and it was basically that they were going to do an Elvis song and he had already recorded part of it with the children in Gordici during the summer. So we said, brilliant, excellent, we have something for the children to focus on. Um, and we kind of, we, we spun it out for a while for them, told them there was going to be a recording. Um, that was the first time we had done a recording in our school and it was a joint project with St. Connor's School. Um, so the kids were very excited. Um, so then of course it was down to, okay, now we have to rehearse it and it has to be bang on, we have to get it right and we got our harmony group together um, and so they worked really hard just working on the harmonies 
And then it just kind of came about. The kids actually were so enthusiastic about it. It wasn't a difficult job at all. It was just, here we go. And the class teachers were great because they worked on it in class with the children. And then we would come together in the hall on a Friday and work on putting it all together. So it was a real privilege for us when Donna Sullivan approached us earlier on this year with his ambitious plan of recording a CD to raise funds to benefit the orphanages in Gardici. Uh, we were privileged to be asked because Don has so much exposure to different music groups and channels. He's so immersed in music in the community and it was a privilege for us to be selected from all his contacts. Um, the journey of making the CD has been very beneficial to us as teachers and as a school community because so often um, in our context as teachers, we're teaching children about helping others, about compassion and about making a difference in the lives of other children. But this gave us a real experience to concretise that and uh, make the learning real and to actually embark on a project together with the children to make something that might make a difference to some children in those orphanages in Garadici. I suppose overall, in conclusion to say, we are so proud of the children, of the community of Shannon, of all the people involved in helping Garadici, the selfless people who give their time and energy and commitment, and to Don and Joanne for organising this project and for allowing us, us to be part of it. Uh, thank you to everybody and to everybody involved in realising the, the dream. If you could say something to the kids in Gardici for Christmas, like a little Christmas message, what do you think it would be? Could There's be so many things you want to say. very simple, it could be whatever you want to say, what do you think it's would say? Um, we hope you have a nice day, Merry Christmas. Nice one, that's cool, I like it. I like it. Um, just try and make the day as special as you can, even though for you it's just the same day. Try and... Uh, just like enjoy it when you can. Nice one. <coughs> nice one. Do you know what you'd say then? Yeah, I'd um, I'd say to them, I hope that you have a, uh, an, an amazing day, and I really wish that I could be there with you right now. Oh, it's beautiful. Okay. Well done. That was class. Well done, yeah. guys. If you were to, let's say the kids over there, they then see uh, this message on Christmas Day because this is going to open Christmas Day. So if they see this. Is there a, something that you'd like to say to them? Maybe. Um, I just want to say that we hope that our, this money we raise for you is going to impact your life in a big like way and ha I hope you have a really good Christmas and get loads of presents. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, any people who are from Gordici or are watching this video knowing that, just know that people are thinking about you. Pe people won't stop stop until you have the comfort comforts of a of a nor normal house. Perfect. Yeah. Deadly, thank you so much.
just like to say a few words on our behalf, on behalf of St. Connors, the uh, pupils, the parents, the staff of St. Connors. We were delighted to be associated with this brilliant project. As I said earlier, it's been going for quite a long time. Um, when we were asked to do it, uh, the remarkable thing was that everybody said, yes, what can we do? And I'd like to thank Rosie, uh, who's a colleague of ours at the school. She had the inspiration. We look up to Rosie. The kids all know her. And they're very moved by what Rosie and her colleagues in the Burn Chernobyl project do. Joanne has worked with us as well and has been involved in some fundraising we did internally during Halloween. So this is an absolutely brilliant project. It's a privilege for us to take part. Uh, the children are absolutely magnificent and I'm delighted that you got to see their talents at show this evening. I'd like to thank Miss Cleary and Miss McDonough for all the hard work and I think they deserve a special round of applause. <laughs> Board management of the school for backing it, all the other staff in the school, uh, the teachers who are here with us tonight, our secretary, trees and caretaker John, but most of all, from our part, to thank the boys and girls of St. Connors. I think they deserve a special round of applause. Thank you very much, and on behalf of St. Tolas, I'm delighted to be here this evening. Um, the song is just wonderful. I suppose in St. Tolas we have a long association, no more than many of you here tonight, with the Burren Chernobyl Children's Project. We've been involved in fundraising for a number of years, and it was really thanks to Joanne, who has worked in our school for many years, who I suppose was the inspiration behind that. And over the years we've had things like Odd Sock Day, Mad Hair Day, Weird T-Shirt Day, all sorts of great fun things. But the best thing has been that Joanne has gone out to the orphanage in Gorodice and she's brought back personal messages for us in St. Tolas from the boys and girls in Gorodice. And I know that means a lot. And even this year, if you remember, we got lovely little Christmas decorations and they're on our Christmas tree. So it's a very real link between us here in Shannon and the boys and girls who are in Gorodice in the orphanage there. I, as I said again, I'm so delighted to be here this evening. I want to thank everybody, no more than St. Connor is. I want to thank all of our boys and girls in St. Tolas. You're going to hear them sing too in a moment. They have a little song as well. I want to thank uh, Miss Halliday for all her hard work and all of the staff who are both staff here tonight and staff also here. Together. 
Um, a couple of things. Just, it's been extraordinary the journey down the years and the support from um, Shannon from Goradici. And when we went there first, I suppose the big thing was that there were so many children in the rooms and nobody really knew their names. And there was a list on the board, okay, but nobody knew them. Everybody knows you. So we checked and we got to know them and we came across names like Dasher and Dancer and... Am I going wrong? We came across names like Sasha and Dasha and Masha and Pasha and Kirill and Sergey and lots and lots of children. And the big difference that Shannon has made is that everybody became a person with a name rather than just a group of people in a room. It was absolutely wonderful. And all the kids out there, they don't know you, but they know about you. And they're absolutely delighted with the support from Shannon. I did not ask to be here. I know no other way of life or living like you're used to. In brightly colored hues of blues and greens, and children playing serenely in your home with not a care or worry. I ask if I can be with you for just a day or two, or more or less, to see the world as you do, and be with you where children play in brightly colored hues of blues and greens serenely. Be still, my child, and know we are always here. As well as having the picture, we actually have, um, we've got a, a film version of this as well. We, Joanne recorded it on the phone and it's it's a beautiful, absolutely be beautiful moment. And if you can see it, the girls, obviously English isn't their first language. Um, so the, the words, they try to get the words. And if you watch carefully, actually, Tanya watches Joanne for the whole thing and is watching her mouth and is trying to mouth the words just a split second after her. It's absolutely beautiful. They give us the ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah uh, in places where it's not meant to be and in places where it's meant to be with some marvellous harmonies. But again, back to what Joanne said, it's not about what, how they were singing. It's the, the, the actual moment. Capturing that as a moment was just absolutely I mean, stunning. Stunning. I'm getting, I'm getting eaten here now as well. <laughs> Stand you. 
That's the one. 